Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Uh, in this video, I'm going to cover the Consumer Price Index report that just came out yesterday morning. The October numbers showed a year-over-year -year increase of 6.2%, monthly increase of 0.9%, and that's been largely in line with what I have been covering in my final demand model. So just to recap what my final demand predictions were for this month's CPI, I was forecasting a monthly rate of 0.7% and an annual rate of 6%. Instead, we got 0.9% and 62 which I suspected that my model would underperform the actual consumer price index because in the previous month it overperformed. Last month, I predicted that there would be a 0.7% increase in the CPI. We only got a 04 so there's kind of this, this uh, catch up that we've been playing in there. Now, if you've noticed here, I've overlaid the CPI in blue. The This is the annual percentage changes with the producer price index for final demand. And notice how the two strongly correlate with one another. And that makes sense because final demand is just one stage of production removed away from the consumer price index. Yet in the last few months, we've seen this huge divide form between final demand and consumer price increases where final demand prices keep pushing up. Your wholesale prices are pushing up, but there's been sort of this lag in the consumer price index. And now we're seeing the consumer price index catch up to that. And therefore, um, we're going to see situations where the consumer price index will probably overperform final demand. And while final demand is, is uh, pointing to a 10% annualized increase by the year end, based off the trend that it has been growing right now. I don't think that the CPI will get up to that high, but uh, definitely could get up to say 7% or higher right now based off of just its own trend and, and uh, final demand for next month. We're looking at the CPI pushing, at, pushing toward that 7% threshold. And if I were to suspect and guesstimate off of this, we probably will push to 7% or higher. Now, looking at the final demand model, let's take a look at next month. Next month, the forecast of the model is showing that there should be another 0.5% jump. But really, I think that we're probably going to see a little bit more overperforming on the consumer price index because what we've been seeing is that the CPI has been lagging behind a final demand in the increases. And though it's still staying in this 98 to 100% channel, so 98% of the prices of final demand at least have been translating into consumer prices, that's definitely on the low end of this channel, and we're probably going to see the consumer price index catch up to that final demand and start to see those increases. Now, looking forward here, based off of the idea that we're going to be pushing 7% by the end of the year, that's brought the CPI more in line with the historical norm of the last 20 years, just based off the influx of money and debt that's been measured by M2 and total debt, which is all debt in our economy right now, the correlation between that and its effect on prices has been roughly that for every $1 of money and debt into the system, it has resulted in a 30 cent increase in prices. Assuming that that correlation holds true, then we're probably going to see uh, the prices you know, reach and peak around 7%. Now, this is assuming a high confidence in the U.S. dollar. If the U.S. dollar starts to falter in its confidence and, say, returns to the 1970s level, then we're going to see double-digit inflation. We're going to see inflation of about 13 or 14%. And over the long run, we're going to see it average out at about 8% per year, which is eerily similar to what we were seeing in the 1970s. So things are very much playing out like it's the beginning of the 1970s. It's very scary how and eerie how um, there's these staunch parallels between what is going on now in the pricing markets and what was going on then during the 1970s. So uh, not to say that history repeats itself, but it, the saying goes, history may not repeat itself, but it can often rhyme. And we may be seeing a sort of rhyming scenario that is playing out here. Now, part of the reason why I think that there was a lag between the CPI and the PPI for final demand has been this shelter component. So especially, especially building up to February 2021, the shelter component for annualized price increases was falling. Though for reasons I cannot say, I don't know why it was falling. I do know that around this time, the housing component started to increase. The housing prices and rental prices really started to escalate based off of data provided by Redfin and Zillow. 
we had started to see those and we were seeing those in the S&P Case-Shiller Housing Price Index, though why it did not translate automatically into higher shelter prices right away, I do not know, but we're beginning to see it and based off of this V-shaped jump in shelter component prices, which is one third of the CPI, we're beginning to see this jump. And based off of my own um, analysis between the trend for shelter prices and its effect on the CPI, based off of how high the Case-Shiller inflation rate has gone up to, we're probably looking at about a 6% price inflation building right now, okay? So that's gonna have at least a 2% effect on the CPI building that and keeping that CPI elevated for some time. That's gonna that's gonna stay elevated for throughout the year of 2022. So contrary to the narrative that has been coming out out of our certain government officials, such as uh, the talking points that have been provided by Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg or Secretary of Treasury Janet Yellen or even President Biden himself, we're not seeing peak inflation. Peak inflation has not hit yet, and it's not just the supply bottlenecks. A lot of this is due to the effects of monetary and fiscal policy because fiscal policy has necessitated a lot of debt and money printing to enter the system to keep interest rates low because the government's running record deficits right now. And that's having its effect on prices. That's just the name of the game. That is what happens. When you spend more and you print more, you're going to get higher prices. It's not rocket science. It's a very st strong, clear correlation that we have seen. And this was established by Milton Friedman in confirmed in the 1950s and 1960s. So what I'm doing is just following in the footsteps of an economist who has already done the work for us and established a very causal, simple, logical relationship that when you print more money and spend more money, you're going to get more prices. More money chasing the same goods or fewer goods results in higher prices. Unfortunately speaking, the shelter component cannot explain the, the total divide between final demand and the CPI. Because once we correlate the CPI and strip out shelter prices and overlay that toward final demand and compare the two, it does close some of the gap, but it doesn't close all of the gap. So, you know, here's the CPI once again. This is all items minus shelter. And yeah, there's a there's definitely a stronger correlation here, but even when we, we take that into account, we still see that in terms of final demand, in terms of final demand, um, it doesn't it doesn't completely close that that gap there. So there still seems to be some breadth, some room for these for these uh, prices to start escalating up at least another percent or so, and and very much so, we could see the total CPI rise over 7%, which is going to have certain ramifications in the investment markets, particularly in the bond markets, which I have been stating are heavily overvalued right now. They're trading at negative rates and negative yields, and there's only going to be so much time that investors are going to tolerate that before they compensate for it and possibly pull the stock market into a bear market. So that's something to keep a lookout for. Now, on the flip side of this, the gold and silver markets have sort of reawakened in the last week or two as all of a sudden investors have become aware or at least more aware of the inflation that I have been warning about for the last three or four months. And I've been saying that we would, we would, this would happen. I, what I've been surprised by and astonished by is that it hasn't happened sooner. It's taken this long for investors to finally realize that yes, these inflationary effects are not transitory or even what you consider transitory, they're not, they're not so short-sighted. They're going to be with us for the next couple of years or so. And that's only if the Federal Reserve takes its foot off the gas. If the Fed keeps its foot on the gas and keeps printing money, then yes, prices are going to continue to escalate for some time. And as Milton Friedman has often pointed out, there's been about a, a two-year uh, difference between the initial stages of monetary inflation and their effect on prices. So it's been about a year and a half now. We're beginning to see these effects. And if Friedman's right, we haven't really seen the full effects of monetary inflation yet. We're not going to see that until the spring. And even then, the Fed's only tampering down 
on money supply increases, it has not stopped or halted it yet. It's going to taper back its asset purchases, which is a start, but right now, monetary inflation on an annualized basis is still way higher than what it was even post-2008 when the initial rounds of quantitative easing and monetary stimulus was being generated by our Federal Reserve under Chairman Ben Bernanke at that time. Now, when we look at the detailed look of the consumer price index, we can see that contrary to the previous narratives where it was espoused by our monetary and federal authorities that uh, the causes of price inflation were just a few goods here and there, that is no longer the case. Food is going up. Energy is going up. Even when you strip out food and energy, those prices increased on a on a monthly basis of 0.6%. We're seeing jumps in new vehicles and used vehicles, but we're also seeing that shelter component start to rise. So shelter has gone up by a whopping 0.5% this, this month. A lot of that's been driven in rising hotel prices, which may have been contributing to slightly lower shelter prices um, in the previous months as hotels were not being filled due to being shut down from COVID, but we're seeing the rent start to come up, the owner's equivalent rent, which is the attempts by the government to estimate housing price increases into the, into the actual consumer price index. That is going up. We're seeing medical care prices going up, transportation prices going up. Everything is going up. Motor fuel has escalated, for, you know, and food from all over, especially with dairy and meat, that is all escalating right now, and it's going up at a very sharp and alarming rate, and those rates are not going to abate right now because, again, the source of this has been the monetary and, and fiscal policies, and we're not going to see that change very much. More than likely, what we're going to see out of our fiscal authorities is more or less rearranging the debt chairs on the Titanic, and maybe the monetary authorities might take their foot off the gas a little bit, but we're still heading to that cliff, that, that inflationary cliff. And like I said before, if the investors start to panic and they start to trade out their assets, their financial assets for goods, and we see this flight to goods, then we can really see inflation really start to take off. So it's very vital right now to own gold and silver. And the reason why is not because you can make a fortune off of this, but because the fortune hasn't been made yet. Gold and silver is severely undervalued right now because in a high inflationary environment, thanks to generously low interest rates, that has kept people out of the markets of gold and silver. And the narrative that has been pushed by our monetary and fiscal authorities has been this is transitory. So now that has left gold and silver very cheap compared to stocks, compared to bonds, and compared to cryptos right now. So I expect that these prices will continue to increase. Gold should push, say, $2,000 an ounce by the year's end. Silver itself should really start pushing about $30 an ounce. Silver is very undervalued at this. Now that's just a top-of-the-line guess. I can't prove that prove that, but with the uh, $1.2 trillion stimulus spending that has just been passed by Congress, we're going to see government expenditures explode again in the final quarter, and it couldn't have come at a worse time because it's going to exacerbate the shortages. It's not going to relieve those shortages, and again, that's going to press up the CPI, and it's probably going to cause the CPI to start overperforming the 70% mark in late 2021 or early 2022. I'm not sure, so I'm not going to say that as a definite forecast because that's really more of me just subjectively looking at the situation instead of providing objective analysis based off data. But my suspicion is we're going to see higher prices, higher than the 7% annualized inflation rate um, because of the effects of fiscal and monetary authorities making the situation worse and not better. The monetary authorities are not pulling back on monetary printing fast enough the fiscal authorities are still heading are still running headstrong into a cliff lying to the public and saying that these um these these stimulus bills will relieve inflation no it will actually add to inflation now i'm actually going to create a video on that because i've been astonished by the rhetoric that had come out of Janet Yellen's mouth trying to say that stimulus spending would actually relieve the inflationary pressures and cause prices to uh, calm down and inflation rates to drop. I'm going to show economically from her own school of thought 
why that is incorrect and to kind of reveal that basically she's lying. So that's a video I'll probably produce maybe sometime this weekend or not. I've got a lot of different things that I do want to cover. I do want to cover the, the stimulus bills that have been talked about, the one that just passed, go over those details and explain why they will not accomplish what the government authorities are setting out to accomplish, particularly with relieving price inflation, which will also tie into Janet Yellen's rhetoric that it's going to relieve price inflation. She really knows better, and she's basically lying to the public on that. There's also a couple of other topics I'm going to go to. I'll recover what's been going on with gold and silver and uh update my models and also I do want to update the debt default models because with the Fed reining back on their monetary stimulus we could enter another dangerous scenario where not only are we met with prior prices but we're met with higher interest rates and that's going to have very very bad consequences on our economy because our economy is over indebted fortunately we were over indebted with cheap debt what happens when we become over indebted with expensive debt there's going to be a lot of bankruptcies there's going to be a lot of foreclosures on mortgages there's going to be a lot of businesses going out of business and unfortunately it's going to lead to quite possibly a depression so i'm definitely going to create a video on that and what i think is going to transpire in the next few years so stay tuned on that um the other thing that I'll probably cover is that about five months ago, I wrote a, I wrote a paper that um, kind of predicted all of this. And I'll probably just post that on this YouTube video, but it kind of shows you just how much foresight I had into all of this. Not that I'm a genius or anything, but it's just to, just to let you know that I've been watching this for some time. I have been expecting this to transpire and things have more or less played out as I expected, which is not good because my outlook on this is not going to be too rosy, too positive. So unfortunately, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that's the truth of what's going on right now. And it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. Guys, thank you for watching. If you like my content on this video, make sure you click that like button. Subscribe to my channel so that way you get updated with any new videos that I come out providing you the top of the line, latest information and data analysis that I can on our economy right now. If you want to hear more about my projections and stuff, you can watch my previous videos, my previous takes that I tried to organized by topic. Also, click that notification bell on the video. That lets you know uh, whenever I upload a new video, so that way you can you know get the get a look at to what's going on in real time. So once again, I thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.